Welcome to a very brief history of nearly everything related to key events that led up to the start of the Wheel of Time story. Spoilers for this video are set to moderate, as I'll be discussing many points of history that are not revealed until later in the books, but nothing story or plot related will be spoiled. This will not be a comprehensive or deep look into the history, but rather a brief overview of the points of history and what we know of past ages in very broad terms. For example, I'll show when the Trolloc Wars took place in history, but I won't go into detail about what happened during the Trolloc Wars. For a more in-depth look at the individual moments of history, check out my ongoing deep dive series on this channel called Wheel of Timelines. The opening paragraph of each Wheel of Time book says, the Wheel of Time turns and ages come and pass. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time, but it was a beginning. It's difficult to comprehend an infinite time loop of seven repeating ages that has neither beginnings nor endings. So to make it easier, I'll break up the individual ages of the past as we know them into a linear timeline. But keep in mind, in the Wheel of Time metaphysics, there are no beginnings or endings. This is just a beginning for reference. This is where the first book begins, in the year 998NE of the Third Age. Thanks to the in-depth companion book, glossaries, an illustrated guide that came out in the 90s, and the many moments of history that are revealed throughout the books, we're able to piece together a pretty clear timeline that includes history from the last 3,500 years or so, placing us just near the end of the Second Age, here. Little is known about the history before that, or even the length of the First and Second Ages. We believe the First Age is very similar to our history here on Earth. There are some Easter egg type references in the books, where ancient myths and legends that are mentioned by the characters are reminiscent of events and people from our history. See the first Wheel of Timelines deep dive video for more information about the First Age. According to Robert Jordan, ages often end with a large event or discovery. We don't know when, but at some point near the ending of the First Age and or the beginning of the Second, the One Power was discovered. After that point, it's possible that thousands and thousands of years passed before our knowledge of history begins. To the characters in the Third Age, the previous age is referred to as the Age of Legends. Advances in technology and deep understanding of the One Power made most of this time a utopian era of great peace and progress. The ending of the Second Age, or the Age of Legends, is marked by a catastrophic event that has become known as the Breaking of the World. Here are the events that led up to the breaking. Aside from the birth of certain important historical figures in previous centuries, the most important events to make note of started right around this point, about 100 years before the breaking of the world. Around this time, a man named Luz Theron Telamon was the leader of the Aes Sedai and was basically the most powerful person in the world. Researching Aes Sedai discovered what they thought was a new source of power just outside of the pattern, and they drilled through the pattern to access it. They unwittingly bored a hole into the Dark One's prison, giving the Dark One the ability to touch the pattern and influence the world. It took several decades before people realized what had happened. The utopian society of the Age of Legends began to crumble as the Dark One's evil spread. Bread. This devastating time in history became known as the Collapse and lasted for about 110 years. During the Collapse, many people, who later became known as Dark Friends, began to side with the Dark One, being promised immortality and great power. Many of the most powerful male and female Aes Sedai of the time also joined the Shadows ranks, calling themselves the Chosen. The rest of the world called them the Forsaken. One of these Forsaken, called Aganor, experimented with the One Power and the tainted evil of the Dark One to create abominations that became known as Shadow Spawn. Trollocs, Murdral, and other freakish human animal hybrids were created in the hundreds of thousands to serve as the rank and file of the Shadow's armies. The Dark One was not fully freed from its prison and was only able to barely touch the world through the boar. The Dark Friends wanted to free the Dark One entirely, so they coordinated an attack on a large city called Devale. The attack on Devale is often cited as the first real battle that marked the start of the War of the Shadow, also called the War of Power. During the War of the Shadow, Luz Theron Telamon united the forces of the Light and became known as the Dragon. The War of the Shadow lasted for about 10 years. Near the end of the war, 113 male Aes Sedai, called the 100 Companions, were led by Luz Theron in an attack at the heart of the Dark One's power at a place called Shail Ghul. There they patched the boar with seven seals. 
13 of the most powerful Forsaken were also there at the time and were sealed on the other side of the boar along with the Dark One, no longer able to influence the world. While the sealing of the boar was a major victory for the Light, it was also one of the most devastating events of the War of Shadow. Just before the Dark One was fully sealed away, he lashed out with a final counterstroke and tainted Sidene, the male half of the true source. For Luz Theron and the surviving companions, the results of the taint on Sidene immediately caused them to go mad, and they began to wreak terrible havoc on the world. For other male channelers who were not present at the strike at Shia Ghul, the side effects of the taint were not as apparent at first, but eventually all men who could channel the One Power were affected by the taint and went mad, causing massive destruction and chaos. Luz Theron Telamon, the dragon, and the leader of the forces of the light became known as Kinslayer after he killed his wife and children in a fit of madness. Soon after, he committed suicide by drawing in too much of the One Power and burning himself out. In the process of overextending his ability and burning himself out, Luz Theron created a huge, sharply peaked mountain in the place where he died. The formation of this mountain, later named Dragon Mount, pushed a part of the land nearby into an island on a river that later became the island of Tarvalin. The years following the War of the Shadow became one of the darkest times in the history of the world, and only fragments remain. Some sources say that the first 10 years after the strike at Shia Ghul were called the Time of Madness, followed by the Breaking of the World. Other sources say the Time of Madness and the Breaking of the World were one and the same. The War of the Shadow eventually ended as Dark Friends turned on each other and male channelers on both sides began to go mad and destroy the world. The devastation caused by mad male channelers was so great that the very face of the land changed completely. Cities were leveled, mountains became valleys, earthquakes and volcanic activity covered the land as the continents shifted. It took many years, but eventually the female Aes Sedai organized and began to hunt down and kill the remaining male channelers, or to sever or gentle them, cutting them off from using the One Power. The breaking finally ended after the death or gentling of the last male Aes Sedai. The world was so torn apart that reliable histories are hard to find from that time. Some sources indicate that the length of the breaking ranged from less than 100 years to as many as 344 years. One of the few fragments that survived this time was the Carithan Cycle, also known as the Prophecies of the Dragon, which were a series of verses and poems that claimed that eventually Luz Theron, the dragon, would be reborn in the world's greatest hour of need when, quote, the Dark One shall once more lay his hand upon the world of man. As the dust settled on the end of the Second Age and the beginning of the Third, people began to recuperate and the world slowly pieced itself back together. The remaining female Aes Sedai eventually formed the city of Tarvalin and built the White Tower there on the island near Dragon Mount, about 200 years after the breaking. A new calendar called the Toman Calendar was adopted as well around this time. The Toman Calendar counted the years since the death of the last male Aes Sedai and was in use for over 1300 years. During this time, the Ten Nations were formed. Aside from occasional political strife across the Ten Nations and intrigue within the White Tower in Tarvalin, the world was mostly peaceful until around 1000 AB when hordes of Trollocs left the Blight and began a 350 year long war with the Ten Nations. The Trolloc Wars resulted in the destruction of many of these nations, eventually ending in 1350 AB after a final defeat that sent the remaining Trollocs back into the Blight. A new calendar, developed by Tiam of Gazer, was adopted, which counted the number of years following the Trolloc Wars. These were known as the Free Years. Not much of import happened during this time, other than the land was divided into dozens of countries. In FY 912, a man named Arthur Pandrag Tanrail was born. He would later become a major historical figure of the Free Years, who fought multiple wars and eventually consolidated and conquered most of the land. His armies were never defeated in battle, and he eventually became known as the High King Arthur Hawkwing for his ability to swiftly move his troops. Near the end of his life, Hawkwing became very hateful of Aes Sedai, and he even attempted a siege on Tarvalin. His life ended in or around FY 994. His attempt to conquer Tarvalin was his only true defeat. Just months after Hawkwing's death, the War of the Hundred Years began. Despite its name, the War of the Hundred Years actually lasted between 120 to 125 years, and was basically just a bunch of people fighting over Archer Hawkwing's conquered lands. The war ended in FY 1117, and the resulting countries and borders were more or less the same as the current map, with a few exceptions. A new calendar called the Farid Calendar or New Era was eventually adopted, and it counted the years following the War of the Hundred Years. 
There is a ton of history that isn't very important that takes place during the first 975 years of the new era. But the next big event of note is the Aiel War, which began in the late spring of 976 NE and lasted for about two and a half years, ending in midwinter in the year 978 NE. About 20 years later, in the westernmost part of the country of Andor, in a region called the Two Rivers, in a small village called Emmons Field, our story finally begins on an empty road. Tam and Randall Thor and their trusty horse Bella are leaving their farm with a wagon full of brandy and cider, headed to the village to celebrate the coming of spring in the year 998 NE. And the rest is history. Remember to check out my ongoing Wheel of Timelines deep dive series for way more in-depth information about the Wheel of Time history. For more Watt 101 content and other spoiler-free Wheel of Time topics, please consider subscribing and check out the related videos and topics here and in the description.